Well, can you see all these shoe racks behind me, Kelly? They have new and gently used tennies for kids, grades K through 12. And the Soul Brothers, which is a nonprofit group right here in Cincinnati by four young people, they're collecting all these shoes. And I want to introduce you to two of the four. This is Curtis hey and this is Spencer. Hey guys, hey. how's it going? What's up, y'all? Uh, so we're actually here at Union Terminal hosting one of our biggest shoe drives ever. You know, it's super great. We brought some shoes, some locals brought some shoes. It's great. We give away shoes to a lot of different people. We've given shoes to Jamaica. We've done stuff in Africa. We do stuff here local in Cincinnati. We just love to give back shoes to people that don't necessarily have that great opportunity to have them. That's amazing. We want to thank everybody for coming out to us, Try Health and everyone. This is the great opportunity to give back to the community. That's amazing. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Who else is there with you, Kristen? OK, follow me. We're going over to Donna Spiegel. She's a local consignment uh, store owner. And you've donated how many pairs? Uh, at least 150. Oh, that that's had. amazing. <laughs> thank you. Any way I can give back to my community, I want to be there. And seeing these young men so excited about this, it's just so, it's exhilarating, it's, it's great. Well, hey, communities like helping each other, that's what it all is about. So thank you so much for being a part of this. So earlier this hour, we started telling you about the Soul Bros, a group of four young people in Cincinnati who collect new and gently used sneakers for kids who don't have any. You saw that too, of the members are hosting a shoe-in right now. Well, the other two are here with us, and what they do is so cool and so important. That's why they're today's good neighbors. Love you, Jesse. <laughs> From Soul Bros, meet Kellen and Breland, y'all. <laughs> so, how did this start? You really want to know? I do. <laughs> All right, so it started pretty weird because like, I feel like people were like, oh, obviously this started when you guys were on the way to a basketball game, track me, football game, no. It actually started when we were on our way to a polo match of all things. So we were a sitting- A polo in, match? Yes, a polo match. We were sitting in the car talking about the latest sneaker craze, and that's when Spencer's mom, who was driving, dropped the atomic bomb. She told us that there were kids in Jamaica who wore cardboard for shoes, and they walked everywhere. Now, of course, we dismissed this, didn't care, still talking about the shoes, but that's when Curtis, you guys saw him, big guy, big heart, yeah. that's when he said, wait, no, guys, let's pay attention to this. And then we all started talking about finding a way to send the shoes that we had outgrown to those kids in Jamaica. Yeah. And we figured that if we talked to all our family and friends and collected all those shoes, we could really make a difference. That's and incredible. Thus, You're incredible young men. So you, you do shoe drives, though, in your hometown to combat bullying, right? Yes. Yeah, how do you feel like this combats bullying? So it's really sad, but like kids actually get bullied for the shoes that they have on their feet. I, I wore Payless. I, mine would make <laughs> mine would make all the marks on the floor, and people be like, "What's wrong with your shoes?" And I'm like, "This is all we get." Like it's yeah. like, so I get it. It's real. Yeah, but and it, it makes your you fault. feel like, oh man, like I can't. And then you're like walking lightly on the court. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. But kids shouldn't have to worry about that. So yeah. that's kind of like what we're doing. Like we have higher higher end sneakers in our sneaker closet where kids that don't have like the best sneakers can go in, you know, see a pair or two they like, get them, boost their self-esteem, and you know, kids will stop bullying them because yeah. it's not their fault. I think that that's really important. I played sports, that happened to me. So tell us about your shoe drive. Our shoe drive, you want it? Our first one, our very first one burns in my brain because <laughs> we did it at a shoe store in Hyde Park, Cincinnati. And basically the main people, the main reason we got people to come was of course food. We told them that we would be serving hot chocolate and cookies with every pair of shoes that I they donated. I would have showed up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, people came in with a pair of shoes, gave them to us, and then immediately just ran for the hot chocolate yeah. and cookies <laughs> that I remember we had gotten literally two hours before. So we raised huh. about 250 to um, 300 shoes that day, and that's how wow. we started. That's incredible. So you've also created something called, is it sneaker closets? Is that what it is? What is that? We created sneaker closets primarily for two reasons. One, of course, our main mission is shoes. Mm -hmm. We decided to provide local children with shoes because we had been doing a lot of international stuff. Mm -hmm. But we decided to go local and provide them with higher end sneakers. Mm -hmm. But the second reason we did it was inspiration because we feel like a lot of people kind of look down on our generation, like we're lost and we don't have anything to do, we don't care. We're not lost, we just seek to be inspired. And that's what we want to show people that we can do. <laughs> 
speak to be inspired. I don't know young men that speak like you. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so, Marcus Huey, what do y'all think of this? It's pretty cool, right? Uh, it's amazing. You guys are doing way more than like I was even doing as a high school senior when it comes to the philanthropic work that you're doing. I've recently gotten involved with the National Foster Youth Institute, and I've been working over there. Um, to help combat uh, homelessness among the foster youth population. And it just means so much for, for kids to be able to have shoes. Because I actually went out to Jamaica with the Sandals Foundation, and I saw how the kids were learning in um, shipping cargo containers. And it, it, it would mean so much to them to have these nice pairs of shoes to be able to walk in every single day. So round yeah. of applause for you guys. That's all cool. Did y'all bring any shoes? I see some shoes. Yeah. All right. You got some dope. Yeah. <laughs> we got the casual drip as well. I like it. it. Casual drip as well. <laughs> Love it. Got some down there too. I yeah. see. Huey, you got some well, under I, you. I, oh, I, was I, like... I brought you. First of all, congratulations on your work. Thank you. Thank you. It's you know. With all with all with all the all the junk and stuff. Bad stuff happening in the world today. Mm. It's good people like this that keep the world going around. Yeah. You know? so, good work. And I was told I was told to bring an old pair of shoes, yeah. not a brand new pair of shoes. <laughs> so I brought an old pair of shoes. Hey, I grew up with hand-me-downs. It, it still works. Yeah. I grew up with hand-me-down. All shoes work as long as they got soles in them, so they're good. Yeah. We actually used to have a running joke when people would say, what do you guys want us to bring in? We used to have a joke. We used to say, we want your Converse's, but not the ones that are so worn out that you only see the con on the side. So <laughs> this is OK. This is great. All right, well, we have something for the Soul Bros. Timberland is about building stronger communities all over the world, and they're thrilled to help Soul Bros fill their shoe closets in Cincinnati with 50 fresh pairs of Timberland boots. <laughs> <laughs> and as you saw, as you saw earlier, at this very moment in Cincinnati, other members of the Soul Bros are collecting sneakers to give to other kids in their first annual shoe in. So up next, though, we'll head back there to see how the drive is going and watch some kids get their first pair of awesome sneakers. So right now in Cincinnati, two other Soul Bros are in the middle of their first annual shoe-in. So let's check back in with our good friend Kristen from our affiliate at WCPO9 and see how things are going there. Kristen, you're with Curtis and Spencer from Soul Bros. Now, what's the update on the drive? Well, the update on the drive, Kelly, can you see it behind me? Over the break, That's awesome. we were joined by about a hundred little ones. A hundred little ones. We have a sea of One children here. And I'm going to bring back <laughs> Spencer and Curtis now, too. Hey. Hi, guys. Going. So how many pairs of sneakers do you have there? I'd say it's around a few hundred pair. It's yeah. going so well. It's so much more than we thought would happen. At least 300 plus. It's crazy. I, I'm, I, it's unbelievable to me. That's so cool. Hey, Kristen, let's talk to one of the moms. I hear you have one of the moms with you. We do. I'd like you to meet Chelsea, Kelly. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Kelly. So what does it mean Hi. to you to get these shoes for your kids? You know, I am extremely grateful for this opportunity to get these shoes for my kids. I'm a single mom, and I work a full-time job. So it's very hard to maintain and manage things in life. So I'm extremely grateful, and the kids are extremely grateful to get help with these shoes. Well, as a woman who was raised by a single woman, I feel you. That is the hardest thing ever, and I'm so glad that you had this opportunity. And these boys started this whole movement that is really helping people. I mean, I'm really happy you're one of the recipients. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. All right, well, y'all pick some good shoes. <laughs> Uh, well, Ke Kellen Breland, like, how do you feel when you see a drive like this come together and you get to actually help these people? Now that's a single mom. That's hard. My mom was a single mom with three kids. That is hard to hold it down and be able to buy a new, hence why we didn't have really expensive shoes. Um, but how do you feel? You have that kind of impact on someone. Well, we started this organization in the eighth grade and just seeing it grow over a course of five years has been extremely humbling. Yeah. <laughs> just Knowing that I'm changing the world with um, the people I love, doing something I love with the people I love, changing the world with a dream and a friend. Yes! A dream and a friend. You have all these quotes. 
You should come out with a book. All the quotes that keep spilling from your mouth. I we love it. You did write a book. You I did? Was, yeah. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah, we have a book on Amazon called Soul Bros Change the World. Yes. And actually, now that we're in LA, we talked about, we were inspired by Kobe Bryant's short film. Yeah. We were talking about the possibility of making it into an animated film. Wow. That is really uh, cool. You should do it. Go no, talk no. about it. Like, right. do it. That is amazing. Okay, well, I have a surprise. Shoe Carnival is committed to helping build stronger communities by giving back to the areas where they do business through sponsored events, educational programs, and charitable donations. So, Shoe Carnival is donating $5,000 to Soul Bros Inc. <laughs> but wait! But wait, there's more! There's more! There's more. There's more. Kristen, tell them about it. Not only is Shoe Carnival donating $5,000, Shoe Carnival is also having a shopping party for each and every one of the kids in this room. And how do you guys feel about that? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited with their shoes. That's amazing. Love their shoes. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. Y'all have such a fun party there. I wish I could party with y'all. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.